light all the candles. The first candle is hope, shining to those worn thin by times of waiting. The second candle is hope, shining to those worn down with wearied souls. The third candle captures the hopeful expectation of those eagerly watching for God's glory in our day. The fourth candle is the hope for a new tomorrow, shining for those seeking freedom from the wounds of this world. And tonight we light the Christ candle. This candle radiates the hope of Jesus Christ to all who are willing to receive it. Holy child of Bethlehem, you are the hope for our hurting and broken world. We thank you, O God, for guiding us through this season of Advent, shining your light in the midst of darkness. As, our, as your birth lit up the Bethlehem sky, continue to shine in our world by dispelling darkness, binding up the broken, and calling forth the faithful. On this holiest of nights, make us willing to welcome you as our Savior and Lord. We pray this in the name of our newborn King. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, for unto us a child is born. Amen. Jesus, who is the Christ, you have truly entered our world. You have become flesh of our flesh and bone of our bone and the word of God in our midst. Be known to us now in ways which touch our lives, that we will never doubt your understanding of our journey. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first lesson is from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders the rod of their oppressor you have broken as on the day 
in mid of mid mid midinian <laughs> for all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire for a child has been born for us a son given to us authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace his authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of david and his kingdom he will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore the zeal of the lord of hosts will do this the word of the lord Please join me in reading Psalm 96 responsively. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, name, salvation salvation. Declare his glory among the nations and his marvelous works among all peoples. As for all the gods of the peoples are but idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Amen. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. For he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. The second lesson is from Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and world passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself up for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purity for himself, a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the end. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. The first Christmas that we were parents, my oldest daughter was not quite two months old at Christmas, and we were opening Christmas cards, and my wife said, you know, I like this one because Mary actually looks exhausted, (laughs) right? I mean, she never looks tired. I mean, okay, she's the mother of God, so like, I get that. I mean, it's probably a little bit different, but I'm just telling you, she never looks in the pictures like somebody who just gave birth in a barn, right? (laughs) And had all these random people showing up with, you know, useless gifts, if they brought any gifts at all. Just saying, if I was in their situation, there would have been a lot of things I was pondering in my heart. That's, you know, it's, it's not quite as fun as it sounds. I think that we all have somewhere good memories of Christmas, right? It's such a magical time, and especially when you're a child and the lights and the music and the presents. But as you get older, I'm not saying that all the magic is gone. It's just that you know where the magic comes from, right? (laughs) At least in part. You're the one who has to wrap the presents and sing the songs and light the trees and, well, not light the trees, you know, decorate the trees. All that, all that busyness and, and clean the house for the five millionth time. And it just feels like, didn't we just do this? I mean, I know it was a year ago, but like, are we on to this again? And the school's out and it's too cold to go outside and everybody's got a cold and it's negative something and they're stranded in the airport. And is this how God shows up among us? When people were waiting, for Jesus, for the Messiah, for thousands of years. Many of them had this expectation that Jesus or the Messiah was going to sort of like ride in triumphantly on a horse and do whatever you do when you ride in triumphantly on a horse. But if you think about it, you know, turning all the 
the remnants of war into fuel for the fire and bringing peace, that's, that's quite a feat, right? It's going to have to take someone of particular magnitude and just absolute perfection. But what they got was a baby, right? A screaming baby who probably dirtied a few diapers. <laughs> and that baby grew up to be, yes, a wonderful counselor and a, and a prince of peace, but also a human being who sometimes got angry, who had doubts, who maybe made bad jokes. There's no biblical evidence for that, but you never know. <laughs> and I know that in the midst of this busyness and craziness and all that this season can be, you know, people will say, well, Jesus is the reason for the season, right? And I, and I, I imagine you probably agree with that, at least in part, or you wouldn't be here tonight. But don't you ever wonder, how did we get from wonderful counselor and Prince of Peace to staying up till midnight to make sure that the bow on the present is exactly perfectly the way it's supposed to be? How did something that should have been so beautiful become something so messy? I guess that's because that's how life is, right? Beautiful and messy. And even though the expectation was that the Messiah would be just like the most amazing thing that ever happened and come fully formed to earth and make everything perfect instantly, the reality is our lives aren't perfect. Human existence is messy. <laughs> it's, it's full of pain and struggles, and it's also full of beauty. But for God to be born among us, right, to be incarnate and made real in this world, God chose to dwell not just in perfection and beauty and everything that's magical, but in real life, our messy, imperfect lives, so that we would always know that no matter what we experience, good, beautiful, ugly, scary, that God is present to us. And I honestly can't think of anything more magical than that, more beautiful, more amazing. That God, who could have been anybody, could have done anything, right? Could have rode, rode triumphantly in a horse or whatever, chose instead to live as we do, to dwell in our human lives, to remind us that God is present in everything. And if that's true, well, that changes everything, right? I mean, if God could show up anywhere, in anyone, at any time, I mean, how are we supposed to live with that? You know, if we knew it was just the perfect pretty people, then that'd be one thing. But what if God's in all of us? What if there's an opportunity in all things to make love and peace and joy happen? What then? What if it is our job to take what was born in Jesus that night, that, that presence of God, and make it real in the world around us. Now, maybe at this point you're thinking, okay, but I still have a lot of wrapping to do after this service, and there's a lot of busyness, and it's very dark and cold, and I'm not sure I'm buying all this. And I get that. I think we, as much as we all have wonderful memories of Christmas, we've all also probably been up in the middle of the night worrying or wondering but when you're up in the middle of the night with a screaming infant, you should just see what happens when they smile at you, right? Suddenly you remember that you're loved and that you love how much you love. And you don't have to have a screaming baby to make that happen, right? Although, you know, whatever. There are so many ways that God shows up in the midst of darkness and despair. So many ways that we're reminded how much we love and are loved. This time we get to be with the people we haven't seen in so long and this holiday season, the, the time to share with our friends and families, the kindness of strangers and generosity, the lights in your neighbor's Christmas tree. All these reminders that life and love and hope are real and stronger than anything that we can imagine. So maybe, just maybe, Christmas isn't all about wrapping the presents and cleaning the house and making everything perfect. Maybe it's about 
taking a deep breath and seeing where God might be, recognizing where God is showing up in your life, in the, in the beautiful moments and in the moments where you feel like you can't go on. And if you're up for the challenge, maybe it's about shining that light yourself, about being that presence of God for the people in your life and in this world. It is cold and dark out there. And we live in a world that is crying for peace and love and joy. But we also know that the gift of Christmas means that God is always with us. And that changes everything. And even when it seems like it isn't that way, Christmas is still magical. Because unto us, a child has been born. Emmanuel, God is with us. Merry Christmas. <laughs>
even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Now may the peace of Christ be always with you. Let us be grateful in this season of gift giving for all the gifts we have been given and shared generously with God. Ascribe to God the honor due God's name, bring offerings and come into God's courts.
to remind you that this is God's table and God makes a place for all people. So wherever you are on your journey, all are welcome here. The Lord be with you. and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ your only Son to be born for us, who by the power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that he might be delivered from the bondage of sin and redeem power to become your children. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O oh Father, we remember his death, we pray his resurrection, and we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O oh Lord of all presenting to you from your creation, this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country, where with St. Stephen and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, 
our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May you recognize God born among us always and spread the light of God to all who need it. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the spirit of Christmas. Alleluia.